protocols when we're in the presence of a king is that there is no head higher than the head of the king so when we worship is exalting him and making it known that there is no one higher in this house and in our lives there's no one higher than King Jesus there's no one higher than Jesus no one higher than him Hallelujah. Sing all glorious God one more time.
Majesty, you are King of Kings. So we bow and we we crown you, we exalt you, we magnify, we give you every glory. All the worship is due unto your name. My standing here does not mean you hold back on what you are giving to God. When we speak about our godly inheritance. This right here is a part of that inheritance that over the years we have diluted and we have gotten become ashamed of an authentic move of God where God walks in and interrupts what we have planned. And as a result, we are living on, on manna instead of walking into the promise of God. Manna is not what he gets promised us it was merely sustenance on our way into the promise and we have missed the whole point and the power of coming into an atmosphere of worship where everything else takes second place so when we know there's a program in the house and we are crazy enough to bow and declare that you are king of kings you are lord of lords there is none like you. There is none but you. When we bow at the wrong time of the program. When we lay prostrate at the wrong time of the program. And we tell him that he is our mighty God. We tell him that he alone is worthy. 
then we face what Paul faced when we are accused of not doing the thing right. We are accused of not acting right. That is why Paul said every renegade thought, every renegade spirit, by the power of the Holy Ghost, I arrest it and I bring it down to the authority of the Spirit of God because we do not operate according to man's agenda. So we declare that he is majesty. We declare that he is royalty. We declare that he is worthy to be exalted and to be magnified. And we give God, we give God all the praise. We give him the honor and we give him the glory in his house today. The Lord bless you. You may be seated in his presence. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the name of our most high God. Thank you, Father. Warring for our godly inheritance. A warrior is an experienced person. An individual that is accustomed to warfare and struggle. We are not spectators. We are not tiptoeing around. When we say we are warriors and we are warring for what is ours. And somebody may ask if it is my inheritance, why am I fighting for it? If it's already mine, why do I have to war for it? But that is the battle that we are locked in because the inheritance is ours. We are on our way to our reward and hell will do everything. And anything possible to block us getting there. So we are not tiptoeing. We are warring for what is ours. And I thank God for his presence in his house today. And, and forgive me, you know I'm not going to go down that long road. But we are grateful to God for his presence in his house. We acknowledge the, the leadership of the house. But we acknowledge the sovereignty of God in this house today. So we are going to be looking at our theme text. Praise God. 2 Corinthians 10, reading from verse 1 to verse 5. Now I, Paul, myself beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence and, and base among you, but being absent and bold towards you. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence wherewith I think to be bold against some which think of us as if we walk according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalt itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought, every renegade thought to the obedience of Christ. And verse number six, he said, and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is being ready to shut down and silence. Once God has brought us to a place of obedient submission, anything that will challenge what God has established, he has given us the authority to wage war and take revenge against anything that tries to upset the plan of God. The other day I was either at Shepherds or at another church and we were talking about doing it now for then. We are warring now for then. We are behaving crazy now for then. Here is the thing. We said it over the weekend. An inheritance is something, and, and I'm glad for the folks in the back, that they're going to be helping me out here. I'm going to be throwing some scriptures at you. All week we have been talking about what an inheritance is. And when we hear the word inheritance, we think of somebody putting our name in a will. And when they die, we get something. But the inheritance of the church is now. The inheritance that we are after is right now. No, no, we, our inheritance is not according to the natural. 
No, we are now walking and living in the inheritance of heaven given to us by the Lord Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9 tells us. Let me get to Hebrews. Can you give me from a verse 14 or 13 or 14? He said, we know that we have something, Lady Charles. And he said, in order... For if the blood of bulls, thank you, and goats, and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean, sacrifice, sanctify to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge us our conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Here it is. Here it is. Go ahead, please. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament. That by means of death, for the redemption of the transgression that were under the first testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Give me verse number 16. For where there is a will. Where there is a, no don't apologize. Where there is a will. There must also of necessity be the death of the testator. If there is a will in place, and we know we are getting ready to go into Easter. Every one of us was under transgression. Every one of us heading straight to hell. But my God, they lifted him high, Bishop. They stretched him on that cross. They nailed him to the cross and he died. So I am not waiting for heaven for my inheritance. My inheritance is now because the testator already died. So I need to walk in that inheritance now. So for those who think our theology is mixed up. No, no. We are. And the very devil that God delivered us from. We heard it all week is not happy. So every day you get up. He wants you to forget that the testator died. And we are not now the inheritance of the righteous. And our responsibility. And then right here. Those once saved, always saved people. Get into all kind of theological trouble. Because they tell you you don't need to fight. Once you see it, you see it. Live like the devil. Curse like a sailor. Sleep with who you want to sleep with. Do anything you want to do once you see it. You get it? You're, you're alright. No, sir. We are in a war and you better put on battle clothes. This little tiptoe, anoint me, touch me, blow on me, push me down. Nonsense. No. Put on your battle clothes and fight. Yes, the testator has died. And just like we said yesterday, there's always somebody trying to break a will because they don't think you deserve it. There's always somebody trying to cheat you out of what is rightfully yours. But what we are under is an irrevocable trust. There is no lawyer, no demon, no devil. There is no yesterday, today. There is nothing that can cancel this. So nothing is wrong with the theme, nor the theology, the test theater. Can you tell I'm feeling a little bit goodish, right? The test theater has already died. So the inheritance of righteousness is already mine. And I am going on to the reward when I die. But right now, I am walking in my inheritance. I am enjoying my inheritance. I am living out my inheritance. And any devil from hell that tries to break the trust, I have power to put you under my feet. I have power to cancel you and to nullify you. I have fire in in my belly. Uh -huh. So, when you're going to tell me that it's not possible to get saved and do anything that stop you getting to heaven, you're not reading the whole book. What did you say on Friday night, lady? 
Thursday night, the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the blood was blessed. Bible truth. So Hebrews chapter 4, from verse 1, listen to what the, the testator of the will said. Listen to the one who gave us his inheritance. He said, let us therefore, let us therefore fear, lest being a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of us should fall. And if it was not possible to be seduced and deceived and fall short, if you think we don't need to fight, then these pages need to come out of your Bible. He so said, let us therefore fear lest the promise being left us of entering into his rest, any one of us should fall short of it. So we can't sit down at club and rumble. We can't sit down at gossip table. We can't sit down living common. We cannot live in unrighteousness and expect to enter heaven. And then, one of my favorite is, you know, we could always hang out with this text until next year. Then one of my favorite now, you know, is over. When we get over into the book of Brother Jude. Brother Jude said, brethren, I kind of wanted to write and share a nice testimony. Can we just jump to the book of Jude, please? He said, I wanted to write. See, like, oh God, interrupt the thing. Can you tell? I am going with the interrupting flow. Lord of mercy, he said, beloved, I sat down feeling kind of pastorish. And I wanted to write you a nice little testimony. But while I'm sitting there to write to you about our common salvation, my spirit got gripped, my soul got gripped by the condition of the church and all the enemy is getting too close and we are behaving like it's a puppy it's not a puppy it's a ferocious dog it is the very homes of hell it is nothing but the agents of hell wanting to silence the church and give us water down no nonsense he said i was getting ready to tickle your emotions let me just jump off the deep, deep end. I was getting ready to break out my newest bottle of oil from Timbuktu and call a prayer line so everybody can go huh, and fall. He said, but no, no, we fall out one time too many. We have hollowed one time too many. We run the aisles one time too many and the hounds of hell. So let me just... Hang out here for a second. He said, beloved, I intended, and Lady Charles, I'm doing this, you know, because we have some deep people in church, you know, the deep. Just dissect and question everything. And we're deep. And he said, it was needful for me. It was necessary to change gears. Because soldiers have on uniform but have turned in their fighting credentials. But they still like the uniform. So they wear the uniform but not signing up for duty. And all they end up doing is creating gridlock and bottleneck. And my God, you want to go in to go trample an enemy. And they just stand there profiling. Get my good side. Get my left. The devil is a liar. Uh, Jude said, let me talk to you as a church is not every hallelujah is from God is not every tongue is from God is not every prophecy is for the house is not everybody is to speak into your life you cannot be so quick to go out ah, is not every hand and we are outsourcing the battle to people with gifts and talents, but no anointing. We are outsourcing the battle to people that are professional, but no anointing. We are outsourcing the battle to individuals who can holler, but there is no oomph behind it. And as a result, we have more graveyards than altars in the church. But oh God, we rumbled through Bermuda yesterday. We made noise and flatbed truck. We were all over town blaring music. Because we are declaring in the name of the Lord. 
And if I had the lead, sing a voice. Right here, I would bust up and let the church be the church. Let the people rejoice. For we have settled that question. And we have made our choice. Let the anthems ring out. Songs of victory swell. The church of the living God triumphant. She is alive. And she is very well. God so I respect your your diligence to your study and I'm not being sarcastic I respect your diligence to your study and congratulations on your achievement but no you check that when you're boarding the plane that is not carry on that it need to go and check luggage so when you come to the worship of God all of that thing you get out there that is not carry on it's on the no fly list you check it out there and come in here because this old ship has been through some battles before you don't need to psychoanalyze us we know storms and tempests and rocks on the shore although the hull may be battered inside she's safe and dry she will carry her cargo to the port in the sky so warrior woman and men let the church be the church let the people so let me let me go back to brother Jude Give me back, brother Jude. Yes, yes. And so for those who think we don't need to fight, he said, beloved, I was going to write you a nice little Sunday morning Pentecostal encouraging message. But it, oh, but it became necessary for me to switch gears. And I exhort you that you should earnestly violently and intentionally passionately and unreservedly without any excuse contend it means to war for the faith which was once delivered you hear what he said which was once delivered uh -huh. so we go according to the letter of the will uh, because what we have now that is not how he gave it to us but because we want our flesh to be tickled we are going in and we are tweaking so where he said holy he said yeah, well what version did you read it in well did holy mean the same thing now as it meant when they wrote it after all they could have made a mistake when they translated it from the Greek the devil is a liar holy mean holy holy mean rightness before God holy means one size fit all holy mean distinctiveness holy means separatedness from sin holy means I am completely given but it all depends well well, when the scripture says you should not lust, well, what does it cover? Hello. Let it cover apple if you want. Let it cover guava if you want. Let it cover loquat if you want. Whatever you want. But here's the thing. It is not the object you're assigning. It is the principle of God. Lost is lost. Uh, so when he said don't lust. You don't go sit down there. Oh my God. As long as I don't indulge I'm fine. No ma'am. No sir you're not fine. And since it's a ladies thing, you know, it's Sunday morning and there are social things around. Well, as long as we only make out, but don't go all the way. No, ma'am. No, sir. It is still wrong. It is still wrong. As long as I only hold the glass, but don't take a sip. It is still wrong. As long as I only sit, I don't have to curse. It is still wrong. 
And we all know. He said, hear what he said. The, the, the faith which was once delivered to the, unto the saints. Give me verse number. Give, give, give me. For there are. There are certain spirits conniving, diabolical, seductive, suit wearing, tongue talking, degree credential waving spirits that have crept into the church under all kind of titles under all kind of names they have come in he said who oh, they're coming unawares because we stop setting the watchmen on the wall no 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 we don't watch church again we were talking yesterday we don't pray anymore before we put people on praise team oh my god did you hear the voice they can hit it an octave up there my god i pray for that we play cds than to put a fly in the ointment the devil is a liar and we are wondering why the worship of god is going up and no strongholds can be broken well we declare war in praise team we declare war in musicians we declare war in pulpits we declare war over everything that is connected to the worship we declare war in deacon board we so anxious kill and to fill seats that we don't care about anointing anymore so let them come in and practice until they get it by the time you get it every demon and devil every seducing spirit you walk in you already sprinkled them all over the place and you're there wondering why people who used to act right now behaving like they have no sense it is because of the transferment of spirit because the watchmen I told these ladies, and I'm so glad they came. But you know what I tell them for the 28 years, Lady Charles, I ran. I don't like carrying people with me. Because you seeking God, and they want to know where the closest mall is. And there are frustration to your spirit. I'm not telling you not to have fun. And you're ready for church. And they're running in to come. Can't, didn't even have a chance to say Lord cover the preacher they're coming in with their bag from where every seal is and, and, and traumatizing and tormenting and when you come in you come to lay hands the devil is a liar just sit down and make up numbers today don't put your hand on anybody because he said certain men and women it's a woman's conference creeps in unaware because the enemy likes to look at the church and see where the lack is. I tell young women. Unmarried young women. That I don't care if you and your hormones have to fight every night when you're in your house. Don't settle. And do not walk around being needy. Because you will attract predators. You don't walk around being needy. The wrong people will be drawn to you. And because they, they observe you like con artists. They are good at waiting and studying their mark. And they know when to make their move. And they are going, oh my God. It is the very thing I said to the Lord this morning. And, 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 and it comes through right up. Who else heard you when you said so? Who did you confide in? That this was what God said. And before you know it, you think you're talking to God. And next thing you know. And before you know it, here you are. You used to be a worshiper. And now you can't even say hallelujah because you're attached and aligned to the certain men and women crept in on a weirds who were before all ordained to this condemnation. It's not me you know read Bible. He said ungodly men. I don't care how much your suit costs. I don't care who anoints you and call you apostle. Bible said you ungodly. Bible 
Bible said you're deceptive. Bible said you're seductive. And we need to war against you. We need to withstand. Turning the grace of God into lasciviousness, wanton and lewd. So, I will, I will, ah, I will get there if not to date. Uh, since the Lord interrupt the room, let us let me hang out with Brother Jude. I didn't mean to hang out so long with Brother Jude. But let me hang out with Brother Jude. Where we have this idea, Minister Swan, that if it is not fun and jump up, we can't get you to come in to pray for five minutes. We can't get you if praise team worship practice run over by five minutes. Everybody hot. And that's why I don't like to come out. Because you know we have things to do. And we have to be traveling at night. Yet if it is your favorite ball game. Yet if it's your friend's birthday party. Yet if it is something that tickles your flesh. You are there until three in the morning. You will call Uber. And you will do whatever you need to do. Because the flesh needs to be tickled. You can't come in to pray for 30 minutes. You can't come in to fast. You can't be for anything. And we wonder why hell. Turning the grace of God. Into lasciviousness. And in our little. Atmosphere of. We begin now to, oh my God, there is something on you. You know, I, I see prophecy on you. So suddenly, you know. And I think there's an apostolic anointing on you. I've told you over and over how I came out of church, Lady Charles. And I, I, I'm sure we're glad for the residue. You know, we're, altar call is over, but the Lord still kind of have you in a little cubby hole. And that night I was very glad, you know, he had me in that little cubby hole. Because a fellow walked up to me. Some of you have heard me say so. And he said, you need to stop using the little title evangelist. Is God give it to the church? You know? Fivefold ministry. Apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. And you with your super anointed self. You bigger than God. You're going to come tell me, I need to stop using the little title. Oh, you speak with such power. You, you need to embrace the title, apostle. Lord have mercy. I am standing there that night in that little room. And I'm like, Holy Ghost, sit down on me. Tie me to this chair. Put a muzzle on my mouth. Fuse my arms to my side. May not deny me my ability to function for the next five minutes. Because a heat overtook me. I don't need anybody to tell me it's not the Holy Ghost. That was just raw fire. And so we come in. And our churches are overrun. With pieces of paper. You walk in our office. With our degrees and, and things look like. Look like, look like wallpaper. And there is not enough power. Everybody's as blind as a bat. Because my God in heaven. Certain men and women are running rampant. And turning the church upside down. But oh God. Somebody hollered war in Bermuda. Somebody declared a war in Bermuda. Somebody declared clear enough is enough somebody said we will not die like this we will not keep going like this somebody said there is still God the blood still works only God still works there is still power in the name of Jesus Christ so we are declaring war over our lives hey, what and hear the rest of it. And denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. So when Paul said, writing to the church, and I love the fact that he said, contend. So what do you mean then? If it's mine, what am I fighting? Well, sit down and don't fight. What do you mean it is mine? What am I fighting for it? For. No, it is because we are not warring according to the principles of the world. When somebody put, any lawyers in here? When, listen, when somebody put my name in a will and put it in the hand of a lawyer, anybody can scheme all they want, you know. Mm -mm. 
take a picture of me, make a mask, put it on and go in there and tell them that you are me. No, you're going to have to produce. And if they still suspect, they're going to tell you, do your fingerprint. And if they still suspect, they say, look in this thing, let it read your pupils. I don't know for those of you who recently traveled, every time you go, something changed. I am handing the man my ID. He said, no, no, put it in that machine and look in this thing. I said, okay. And I look in the thing and it spit out my thing. Have a good flight. Thank you, please. And I'm sure by next week, they're going to change it. Why? Because TSA looking out for unscrupulous characters and the church of the living God is laying down behaving that we don't realize that every single day there is somebody trying to get across the border with contraband every single day. There is somebody trying to get across the border to interrupt the worship and contaminate the flow every single day. So TSA, so look at me, you know, with my, the one time, you know, my Jamaican heat don't work. When I'm walking up to these TSA people, because they have this steer, you know, and they are looking at you like, breathe fire all you want. You get two bags, not three. So you either consolidate and don't stand here in the line. <laughs> Ma'am, please step aside. You are blocking other people. So you get yourself out of the way. And No, they're not. I got very annoyed one day because that was just madness. My little bag of food. I bought the sandwich in the airport. The lady looked at me. Bishop Crockwell and told me that my Chick-fil-A sandwich is luggage. Handbag, briefcase, and my sandwich. You have three. So I just had to conclude she had a bad day that day. And so I opened my handbag and put the thing in there, squishing up my little curly fries. And I had to push it in the bag because she's telling me, you don't have to agree with me. But before you pass me, I don't need to see a third bag. I don't care if it's candy or piece of trash in it. You need to get past me with two. But the church of the living God, we sit down and anybody want to come in, anything goes. We don't even know, we don't ask if anybody is saved anymore. That is the inheritance we are fighting for. This is what was given to the church, washed in the blood, sealed by the Holy Ghost. My God, there was a time before you do anything, what can wash away my sin nothing but the blood of Jesus you first had to be filled with the Holy Ghost and fire your life had to testify but now we we want numbers we want numbers and so we don't check anymore brethren yesterday Yesterday, and you know me by now, I see God everywhere. You see if miracles, praise people, decide to play the fool. And I, but I'm thank you for this morning for telling me I'm no longer a guest. So I can speak like I am home. Uh -huh. So let me behave like I'm in the pulpit at Shepherds. You see if precious here decide to feel well. My third single is out. I'm, and suddenly it's not happening on everybody. Yesterday, for those of you who were not there. What did you say? What is this or end to end? Is that what he said yesterday was? Yesterday we went end to end. And I was very happy on the back of a flatbed truck. What? Have you? But here is the thing. All through from, where did we go? From, from Somerset. To St. George's. We had music tearing up the city. Can I just hang out right here for a second? And we had moments, you know, when we got the, the King is Coming and the, and the playing. 
But for the most part, except when we stop for church, nobody's sitting at keys, you know. Councilman guitar put down nice as much as he liked to strum. That's a bass, right? Much as he liked to strum that bass. He'd sit down in a safe place. But for the entire journey, we had music ripping the entire country. Persons in cars as much as four cars back could hear what's happening in the front on the flatbed. So it miracles people. And at the end of it, we found out there's a playlist. Lord of mercy. Then if miracles praise team decide now that they're too cute to praise. What you're sitting down in big meeting for? What you're sitting down to negotiate for? Thank you for your years of service. Please to sit down. But there's a playlist in the house. And with all without you we will magnify we will bow down and we will worship so anybody that feel because of your gift and talent you can hold the house hostage we expel you we dismiss you we will not even engage this is the house of God and our inheritance I was sharing with, with Bishop and Lady Minors, uh, uh, Lady Charles yesterday that we are building literally from the ground up, right? And they'll tell you, people are coming in. I think I've had two reception of members since we're there. Two that I baptized and about five others that came in, including my husband. Gave him the... So he's now officially Church of God. Yes, yes. Yeah. So the, the right hand of fellowship. But Lady Miners, I look out, you know, and I see gifts and talents. And I know what the house need. But I tell folks, come on inside. Make sure it's a good fit. I told our, our worship director, I said, yes, they may sing. But let them come to rehearsal for at least three months. Show me that you're serious about this. Uh, I know we are missing a spot. And my altar can't carry the praise team. But I am not that desperate. That all you bring to the table. Is a good voice and no life. No sir. Sit down a minute. Learn the spirit of the house. Understand that this is God's house. You better come through blood. Ready to hear blood. Ready to walk smeared with the blood. So yes you can sing. And do. But sit down. And make sure that this is where God will have you and that is why when God puts it together it works he said Lord have mercy then why do I get the feeling I was supposed to have gone to Jude this morning hear what he said certain men and women and as a result there's a stagnation in the church but hear me well and he said, where is that other verse? Give me that other verse. Uh, verse. Verse 6. Oh, no, no, let, let me go back up. No, verse number 4, that's fine. That's where we're. And when we come in, we elevate flesh. He said, denying the O-N-L-Y, the only Lord God, him alone. He doesn't have a deputy. He's not going in retirement. Your brilliance don't faze him. He is only one God. And for those of us who are commanding officers, because that's really what we are as pastors, we have a responsibility. Here is the thing. When we get to the place, Councilwoman Hayworth, that our flesh enjoys the attention so much, We sit back and raise up a church of idolaters because they worship us more than they worship God. The pedestals that we place men and women on 
try as God might, he can't even get there. And we come in and we get dizzy. We sit down droopy, but as soon as the object of our affection walk in, everybody giddy, oh my God. And I, and I am just known for my face to betray me. No, no, no. When your excitement at seeing me is greater than the excitement when you're in the presence of the only God, something is wrong with that. And we need to address it from up here. Sit down, calm your little flesh. But we enjoy it. And oh my God. I got to a door and they were reading the scripture. And like proper Christian person, I stood up. My, my, my handler. Because I, I bounce between armor bearers and handlers. So there's no telling what I'm going to find when I show up. My, my handler that day said to me, Sister Alana. She said, oh, no, 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 you are the speaker. This, it doesn't stand, stopping when the scripture is being read doesn't apply to you. And I stood, held my ground, you know. And scripture finished reading, Kayla. And she wouldn't let it go, you know. I said, she said, it is the policy here. I said, ma'am, that's a bad policy. So there is no God in that policy. And I am not moving when Bible is reading. This is what was handed to us. Reverence for the house. And the presence of God. Do you know when Bible is being read. God is speaking. And you have the audacity to bring your dressed up flesh. To interrupt God speaking to the church. And then God help our ushers and uh, those of you who are serving, do not be afraid of any one of us. Well, oh my God, you can't have the speaker standing up there. Well, I should have been here on time. And you're going to interrupt the worship of God. And you don't realize our inheritance is in trouble. So the church is now tweaking and diluting herself to get the approval of the How, Look at the worship we were just in. And because I showed up to preach, the usher at the door feel they can't afford to upset my little flesh. So they are going to walk me in, interrupting. You could put up 10 fingers. The church of God's finger doesn't work right then. No, no, no. You are interrupting the presence of God. No, 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 you are interrupting. So putting up the church of God's finger and... No, no, you are interrupting. My job is to grab you and pull you back and say, stand with me and wait until it's time to go in. But I don't come on in. No, interrupting. No, sir. This is what we have done. We are putting flesh where God ought to be. But he said they are denying the only true and living God and the Lord Jesus Christ. And let me hurry up. So, Paul... In your theme text, a little bit of a back story. When Paul said to them, you know, give me our theme text, please, from verse 1. When Paul wrote to the Corinthian church, Lady Charles, this church of ours will always be under scrutiny. And we can never satisfy the world. Paul said, I am begging you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who is presence and base among you, but being absent and bold toward the Paul." Hear what they were accusing Paul of. They said Paul was a wimp. They're like, you write both big letters, but when you are here, you're there weepy, weepy. Hear what Paul said. In the presence of God, I'm nothing. He said, I know who I am, but when I am in the presence of God, I be, you know, give me back verse number one. Look at the language of verse number one. He said, I beseech you by the meekness and the gentleness of Christ. He said, the God whom I revere, who has so broken me to humility, that it doesn't matter how big and strong I am. When I'm in the presence of God, I am nothing. I just go down like nothing. Uh, who in whose presence I am base, I am nothing. I bring nothing to the table he said but when I'm with you I'm bold 
And they accused Paul of, give me verse number two. They, they, they accused him of, oh, you know, you can always hide behind your pen. That he said, when I come before you, he said, let me fix some things from where I am. I'm not a coward. I'm not, I'm not trying to be crafty. This is not worldly behavior. He said, I'm trying to fix some things so that when I get there, I don't have to handle this. I just want to come in and worship. And he said, we think of us as if we walked according. He said, there are some things I need to address now. So that when I come, I don't waste time addressing domestic matters. Housekeeping matters. Let us just come into worship. Verse number three. He, listen. He said, I know what you expect, Lady Charles. What I just spoke of. The way church has now marketed Christianity and church. People... Preachers come expecting to be carried on people's shoulders. And the church expects the fanfare when a preacher walks in. That's what you do at clubs and stage shows. And these big name people have openers. They're too important. Lord Jesus, can I get in trouble right here when we go home? Stay right here. We walk in the flesh, but we do not war. So, brethren, since I am home, we love you, you know. But there is nothing you have that you came by without God. I told the church recently, I said, every one of us who preach this gospel, we are plagiarists. If God's name is in it, it's not ours originally. So when we are going to put people on pedestals, because no, it's not ours. We borrowed it from God. So credit ought to be given to the source. He said we don't function. When anybody here used to go to club and dance and whatever. And when you, and depend, thank you please. And depending on who, oh, listen, don't even think about it for another second. Stay right here in church. No, we're not having any flashbacks. You stay right here in church. Here is the thing. When these big name guys come up, they have openers, right? They're not coming out, you know, until late night, I guess, when all the hardcore party goers are present. They hype it up. And then they, they, they drop the, the smoke bomb or whatever. And then all manner of madness. And then out come these people and the crowd. They don't sing a note yet, you know. And the crowd go crazy. And this is what the world is looking for in church. So, so we use praise teams as openers. And, 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 and depending on which song. And we're not coming out of closet. Until praise team open up and set. And we have the little fake. I think Pastor, Pastor Blanche said it. We have these little fake. Or was it you? These little fake smoke bombs. And then we talk about oh God. Did you see the glory? No it's not glory. No it's you put on a bucket. With dry ice and pour water and dry ice. And put fan beside the thing. And it blows through the house is not glory because the same way you worship devils and demons are jumping up the same way because it's a manufactured atmosphere but when the glory of God is in the house no you don't have time to get applause when the glory shows up we bow down and worship a consuming fire sweet perfume your awesome presence fill this room this is holy ground this is holy ground we are squandering our inheritance for good religious entertainment but though we walk in the flesh no we don't behave like flesh so if you did not get all of your little dance all thing it's not coming out in here if you did not get out all the little itch it is not coming out in here this is holy ground they'll tell you I get crazy on first Sundays because because people think communion is candy living like the devil 
And then, well, it's 1.14. I'm not there, so chances are church finished a long time. The only time they're in church late is when I'm there. <laughs> Listen, we, one Sunday, we're doing communion, and I indicated to one of the servers, clear, to their hands. <laughs> we still chuckle about it. He looked at me like, for why? Wash. Seriously. You're coming to the communion table. You must be joking. And everybody come up and grab communion. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes ma'am. Because church is voluntary. And I'm not quite ready to be locked up yet. I'm asking God, you know, Bishop. And since you, you, you seasoned, I, I asked God, you know, one Sunday, and, and I'm saying it publicly for the first time, my spirit was so grieved. I said, God, withdraw your hand of mercy and let your wrath break out in this house. Because until people know that the God of the New Testament is the same God of the Old Testament, we will not begin to have respect again for the presence of Almighty God. I'm like, God, this cannot keep continuing. So on a first Sunday, Lady Charles, I get, I'm crazy. And I make sure I tell them, if you're not saved, keep your hand off the sacred. If you're not living right, do not come up here. Sit down in your seat. And if something will stop you taking it, repent. No. Because anything stop you as a Christian taking communion will stop you going to heaven. So fix it now. I don't rush communion at church. I've had days when the communion thing is a sermon for the day. I don't rush. Because there's a sacredness. I got myself two deaconesses since I got there. Because I don't think it's everybody ought to handle. And I decided to get deaconesses. Bishop, I was upstairs one day. Just into our service. And look, just walked in in time. To see a young man. With the whole bowl of elements. Just pour them out on the table. And begin sticking them in the receptacle. And because I said to somebody, who is that? Because our service is over. So who is that? And they told, I said, why are they handling the elements? So I got myself two deaconesses. And I said, not even me. This is your territory. Prayed over them. Set them forth. Got the table set up. So the Saturday before first Sunday, they're at the church. And they set up that table. Pray over that table. The only thing I have to do with it when they run out of elements I order. We have a little corner, our own little fridge where we keep it behind locked doors. And they go in and they reached out to me and said, Pastor, we have been looking around church and we need two more deaconesses. I said, give me your recommendations. And they gave me their recommendations and we contacted the individuals because I agreed with them. And they said, yes, we will serve. So the deaconess team is growing. No, 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 everybody come grab elements. No, there is a sacredness. But we have lost it because everybody is now superstar. They tell you I get hot or building not very big. I tell them, even if you're fainting, don't hold on to the community. <laughs> Let somebody else catch you. Don't put anything on it. Don't play with it. Don't touch it. It's consecrated. And there was a time when these things didn't bother us. But we have gotten liberated. Oh Jesus. He said we do not war after the flesh. He said for the weapons of our warfare. Are not carnal. Church we have talked enough. We have argued enough. We have convened enough meetings. We have gotten into our feelings enough. But they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Give me verse number five. Casting down. Listen, when we get back to the place where we are covered, seasoned by the power of the Holy Ghost, when our religious consciousness, when our spiritual consciousness is where it ought to be, when you want God more than anything else, when heaven is the first thing on your mind, 
When pleasing God means more to you than fitting into a group. When you couldn't care less if you don't get invited to an event. It saved me money. When it doesn't matter. When if your friends decide not to honor God, you love him too much. I'm not about to walk away now. Yesterday when Pastor Blanche kept singing that song, the king is coming. Believe me, I kept staring. I couldn't stop staring at the sky. And I found myself saying to God, what will you look like when you come? I'm like, God, what exactly? My God, I sat on the back of that truck. And I said, for 40 plus years, I'm hearing he's coming. And I'm looking up and I'm saying, God, what? I wonder what that scene would be. When we again live rapture ready. He said, casting down imaginations, any thought that questions the sovereignty of God, not only in your life, but in the universe is not of God. Any thought that exalts itself, anything, any teaching, any strange fire, any man's ideology, anything that you put in front of God. Paul said, take it captive, perform a citizen's arrest and bring it into obedience. Look at verse number six, bring it into obedience and having in readiness. Brethren, listen. The days of apologizing for being sold out for God are over. Any, what is the term they use now? Call out, people call you out. If some, then how come we're not calling out the devil? He said, having in readiness. Listen to the, love my King James. He said, after New Living Translation, you have become fully obedient. We will punish everyone who remains disobedient. And no, we're not taking a big stick and beat you. But when you are fully obedient, obedience means yielding your will to somebody else's authority. And when you are completely yielded to God, you know, when he talks about punish, I freeze you out in a second. I cut you off in a second if I have to choose between you and my commitment to God. Anytime I see something that is not God, I will bring you before the courts of heaven in a second. I am not going to expose you publicly, but I am not going to sit down and pretend like I don't see it. If it's going to cost me a friendship, so be it. If it's going to cost me an appointment, so be it. If it's going to cost me sitting someplace, so be it. But he said, I am ready. Anything that will live in disobedience and try to bring me back there so when we talk about just like in the natural even though you have an inheritance somebody dies you'll walk away penniless if when you go in if the whoever wrote the will made mistakes in the spelling if they didn't write your name right and don't is that the whole name you know lady charles when i was being interviewed for citizenship we Caribbean, Angela, two L's, right? I don't know about here, A-N-G-E-L-L-A. -L -L -A. In the U.S., it's one L. So my middle name is Angela. And I'm going through my whole thing. The lady said to me, well, why did you write Angela with two L's and your green card has one? Had the green card for years, Reverend Hashana. Didn't know, you know, because I just think everybody know how to spell like British. So I thought everybody spelled Angela with two L's. And that, it is not where I live. It is not how I entered the country. It is not how I answered the questions. It is one little letter. And if I could not justify, I would have walked out of that office, denied citizenship in the United States. A letter. And we think, if, you're an, if my name, Jennifer Angela, two else, if somebody leaving an inheritance and put one, I can't claim it, you know. Spelling mistakes. Factual mistakes. Can't claim it. Lack of clarity, can't claim it. Fill out more forms, you think I was getting ready to buy the White House. 
fill out forms and go through all these things. And they have to put on it. I, Jennifer Angela Porter Cox, being of sound mind and body. You see, that is not on the wheel. They could have your name in there a hundred times. They call it the sanity oath. If you forget the sanity oath, they're going to see it as a fraudulent document and you're not getting anything. There's a whole lot that goes into whether or not you get a natural inheritance. But we know can't go down that road today. It is the same thing with the spiritual. Don't tell me it's only an L. Don't tell me it's only a one night thing. Don't tell me it's only a little bit. No. Whatever it is you will be denied your reward your inheritance now is that there is nothing lacking we are washed in the blood of Jesus so today God we are saying we recognize that something is terribly wrong we have been handling our inheritance casually and so we come we ask you to forgive us we repent oh God we repent oh God for ourselves we repent as a church we repent as a nation my God in heaven and we have now come is the three points I wanted to tell you we recognize that something is wrong we are repenting oh God we can't go on like this and we have to rebuild an altar we have to go back to the place where the holiness of God and we are doing it now for Kaelan where is the and the little people we are doing it now for the children after us. Because if this is all we have to give them, you know. If this is all we have to give them, we are in trouble. They will not serve God. If this is, they will not serve God. We have some little people at Shepherds and I'm glad for them. And everybody, there's a little one we always talk about, Tyshawn. Tyshawn said, Pastor, I would like to be an usher. Tyshawn was eight at the time. I said, do you want to start today? He said, yes, sir. So I said to one of the ushers, he said, let me go get my shoes. <laughs> he was at the back door without his shoes. He's got his shoes and he came back. I spoke to his grand aunt. He said, he says he wants to be baptized. He wants to be a preacher. The clerk made me laugh. In the States, you know, we do, we do tax letters. Tyshawn getting at nine got his tax letter. I said, say, what now? Tyshawn fills out his envelope when they do offering and get his little money from his, fill out his thing, full name. And Bishop, let me tell you what blessed me. Two things he gives, his offering and gives the missions. And you think they are not listening because our church is big on missions. Thank you, please. You think they're not listening. He gives his offering. Minister Lee will tell you he's the men's president. When he called a men's meeting, guess who is in the middle? Tajon. The other day they got a, a cross. The men blessed the church with a cross. We had a big empty space for the back and they were raising funds. Tajon went and gave his contribution towards the cross and he died. So God help us. If we turn the truth of God into lasciviousness, God help us. If to appease those who think they have arrived, we jeopardize the spiritual destiny of these young ones after us. We have to do it now for them. We have to war for this, our inheritance of holiness and righteousness. I don't care if you're flat broke today. Could you stand? I don't care if hell has been hanging out outside your house. The fact that you are in this house today, it means that you got up today, my God, already a victor. You are the church of the living God. We cannot behave like the world. It may not be popular. Let them criticize. Paul said, talk all you want. We are not wimps. We just don't fight according to how the word fight. We fight according to prayer and holiness and righteousness and Holy Ghost. We don't argue. We don't rule in the gutter. We don't curse and keep malice. We bow our knees. They taught me a song of church. I may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. And because God, this is our fight, my battles. Yes, we are warring, but we are not warring according to the flesh. Can I tell you one more time? Let the church be the living church. Let the people. We have settled our question. So two things today. Two things. You may have a rich relative. And I wish I had one of those. I'm going to keep it real. I could put my name on a piece of paper somewhere. 
that have left you stuff and that's fine. But you cannot build your future on material possessions. Store up your treasures in heaven. Where moth and rust cannot come in and steal. And as a church, we are getting caught up in this prosperity foolishness. And networking and I think Lady Charles said it's all about what your what your building look like and how many car place you have. And my face betrays me, so people don't ask me those questions. I don't have the patience. It's a waste of my few little gray cells and I have better use for those. Brethren, we took I'll never forget yesterday. We took this island. And it was not, what is the word you told me? What is it? What a, a J word? The, the Juve. It was not, it was not Juve. We do, we say carnival, right? It was not Juve. This was the blood. This was Jesus. People sit down eating. We, everybody we pass friendly. And they pick places in town where they hollered. Front street. Jesus loves you. We got to Ruby. Ruby's. Is it Ruby's? The guest. Ruby's. Jesus loves you. We declare, declared all over. Dancers following and they're not 15. We had some strong ladies out there. All three stops. What? They were out there. We had some good old church and beating tambourine and, and, and foghorn making noise. My God, police pull over, you know. No, that tickled me to death, you know. It did not matter who was coming. Police ride up with all his thing saying, don't joke. And he just turned the motorbike. And whoever you are, you have to just stop, you know. And he not budging. And then when motorcade and Jesus go through, he nod to everybody else. You can come now. God gave us the island. We can cannot back down now we are standing flat-footed this is what God has done we are warriors and we are fighting now oh glory to God we are fighting now for then if you came in and you are not saved you have an inheritance yet you are living like a pauper I was reading recently while we were preparing for our fasting at church and I bumped into an interesting story. And whether or not it can be verified, I don't know. But it was interesting. Where the, the, the writer was saying that there are some persons living in the slums of Scotland who are actually descendants from kings. But because the recording of history, of, of lineage was so confused... They have no claim. And listen to how he's, he closed it. He said if they were just able to prove their lineage. They could leave the slums overnight. And live in any one of the palaces they want. Because of the, but because of bad recording. That is what hell has done to this world. You were born already. Yes in sin shaped in iniquity. But with a heritage from almighty God. And because you don't realize yet. That it is already settled. You are still living in the slums of sin. Well today we holler. We bellow. We walk in the mud. Whatever we have to do. We are saying to you today. Your inheritance has matured. Come now. Come now. I told. Where were we? Parsons? Par I told them yesterday. Your name is in the will. It is correctly spelt. Nobody can break it. It's an irre irrevocable trust. Nobody can break it. Nobody can. The blood of Jesus saves to the utmost. If you came in and you are not saved, this is your time to move to this altar. Is there anybody who came in today? You are not yet born again. Could I see your hand? There is no shame in this house. If you do not know the Lord, if you have not laid hold on this inheritance through the blood of Jesus Christ, let me speak to the church. It's our convention. We are the ones who took over the country. Hear what he said. Here's the inheritance. You shall receive power. I don't know what you're dealing with. I don't know what the enemy is saying to you. 
I don't know what broke you. I don't know what is threatening you. But you shall receive. If you're sick, you have power. You're broke, you doesn't matter. Your best friend just tap you in the back. You shall. It does not affect the terms of your inheritance. And as a church of the living God, we have to rise up again under the power and behave like we know who we are. And today, if you came in and you're like, hell is fighting real hard. Feel like he's going to break this trust. Come, let us undergird you today. Time is already gone. Come, let us undergird you today. And when we are finished, don't rush out. We still need to worship in singing and worship in giving. We're doing that right, yes. But anybody in this house today, anybody in this house, talking now to the believers that need to be on this altar, you are fighting now. You are warring today for then. You are warring today for then. Go ahead, please. When the music ministry is ready, go ahead. These altars are wide open. This is your time to move. Thank you, audio ministry, for helping me out with those scriptures. Thank you. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. And when you walk, you just walk understanding, you know. Walk with confidence. Walk with authority. I have heard. And it told, and it told. Thy love. Praise Almighty God. But I long to rise. Hallelujah, God. Closer drawn to thee. Ah, draw. Some people that know to pray, come on up here. Come on up here. Ah, to thy precious bleeding Jesus. Hallelujah. Draw me nearer. Nearer. Jesus to the cross. We are thou. We are thou. Bleeding. 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 
spirit they tell me in banking daddy cartwright that when you put money in the bank in cds and whatever that, that that it has to stay for a certain time right and if you go take it out early there's a penalty and today of god is saying in this house get up from the table no 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 you know you're not adjusting that trust no you're not changing your inheritance get up from the table put on the pen i don't care what is happening today your inheritance is intact and there is a penalty for messing with it i release the blood of jesus over your life today i walk into every circumstance over your life i release the strength and the fire of almighty god you are a warrior by the authority of heaven coming nearer, nearer
keep dropping these little Bishop, when I walked into the immigration office in Baltimore that day I walked in with a green card as a legal resident of the United States no rights and privileges as a citizen but when they had me swear in I walked out they didn't give me the green card back because every other resident document that instant was null and void. Done. I was just said to Ellie, Minister Lady Beverly just ministered to her. She has gloriously given her life to the Lord. Gloriously given her life to the Lord. And I just said something to her which I want to say to this whole house. You cannot be afraid to completely embrace your inheritance. Because once you are under the blood, every other document written against your life, today by the order of heaven, is null and void in Jesus' name. I don't care who writes it, I don't care who said it. Today, every other document is null and void. Every one of them, every other document is null and void. In Jesus' name. Oh my God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. Now. And everything that he has left for us, we have the honor of walking in. The mistake we make is that we minimize God and we maximize our insufficiencies and our inadequacies. But today, in Jesus' name, every unrighteous decree over your life is pulled down, cast down, and destroyed. Things you have heard, things you have imagined, Things you have read have been cast down. You think you've been told have been cast down. In the name of the enemy's mouth is stopped and silenced against your life. Hallelujah. Walk in it. Walk in your inheritance. Walk in your inheritance. I said it Thursday night and I meant it. That it's going to get hotter. The fight is going to get harder. And if I can use the colloquial term, you better get all you can 
and can all you get because the fight is going to be harder but God is bigger God is greater some of us have to stop being relaxed with God and start saying yes Lord I yield it all to you Jesus name give it all to God give it all to God give it all to God Sunday give it all to God give it all give it all give it all give it all fight it's worth fighting for it's worth engaging in the warfare for hallelujah we don't fight as one who beats the air mm, Jesus We fight with assurance. And we keep under our body. And bring it into subjection. Lest after having preached to others. I myself. Become a castaway. Disqualified. Thrown to the ash heap. And rejected. No. I keep under my body. And demand that it walk according to the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody needs to hear this. 
God said, I'll fix it if you let me. I'll fix it if you let me. Let me fix it. Let me do it. Yes, Lord. He said, I make all things new. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let me do it. You won't have to strive. You won't have to strive. Just let me do it. Hallelujah. We no need to struggle. It'll be a fight. But the fight will be in the spirit. And the struggling of the flesh will be held at bay by the power of God's hand. Let me fix it. I can do it. I can do it. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 No need to fear. No need to worry. No need to be anxious. Let him do it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Raise your hands and tell him, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. 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 grateful for the word of the Lord today to us. I preached from that very text last week Sunday. Jude 3 and 4. And the truth of the matter is 
if we don't earnestly contend then what comes up against us will overtake us it's a fight oh yes it is but we don't fight uncertainly we fight knowing that God is with us thank you for the word of the Lord today thank God for the word of the Lord Amen. Thank God for his word. We are blessed. We are blessed. I, uh, I really want to hear this special selection. I really do. I know we have to receive the offering. But we want to continue to remember his God's servant. She's coming back in a few hours. And um, as we all know by now, she doesn't hold any punches. You know what? I would mess with her in the pulpit or when she's out of the pulpit. She said that Jamaican fire. <laughs> I wouldn't mess with you, girl. I wouldn't mess with you. I wouldn't mess with you. I, I'd say, all right, I'll pick, I'll pick somebody else. We appreciate you so much. We love her so much. She has and dared herself to us, her and her husband. And we praise the Lord for what he's done. I'm going to put the rest of the service into the hands of the music team. We want to receive the offering. Uh, we know that uh, this woman's conference is not something that is cheap. It takes money for this to happen. But we are so thankful that God has uh, given a vision to Lady Miners to ensure that we do our utmost to, to do what we have to do. And so we thank you, those of you who cooperate with the vision and, and sow into this. We thank you for that. If you wish to sow with us, please bring a good offering today in Jesus' name. We want you to know that when you come, whatever side you come from, Please walk around the usher and go back the, on the other side of the usher if you do that. So if you're coming from this side, you will go around her that way. If you're coming from this side, you walk around her that way. Just to ensure that we don't impede the progress of the next persons. All right? Praise team. The Women's Conference Ensemble. Let's give them a hand. We're going to receive the offering while they're singing. Just follow the usher. Through some battles before storms and tempests and rocks on the shore. Though the hot eyes battered.
give these ladies a wonderful hand. Thank you, Sister Yvette, Sister Rosemary, and the praise team back up. Amen. Praise God for what we have experienced today, and we bless his holy name. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, we're going to be back in another, in a few hours, family, and uh, so we're looking forward to a great time this afternoon or this evening at six. Amen. We're going to sing our, our blessing. Thank you so much. We're going to sing the blessing uh, before we leave, before we adjourn. Let's follow the instructions of Reverend Estina. So here at Miracle Temple, we sing the blessing over one another. So you want to find your beautiful neighbor, neighbors, and we will sing this blessing. The Lord bless you. Another neighbor.
Amen. Put your hands together and say amen. That's the declarative blessing that we believe. Very scriptural. And we believe that it works. Hallelujah. I want to acknowledge Bishop Cartwright and Mother Cartwright. God bless you. Otherwise known as Papa. Good to see you, sir. Good to see Brother Mark and Sister Julie. Amen. I saw Dr. Crockwell and Sister Crockwell earlier. She's still here? She's left? Okay. God bless them. Sorry? And Reverend Berkeley was here? Okay. God bless them. God bless them. Real good is our prayer. Well, just look at your neighbors and neighbor. It was nice sitting next to you today. And tell them, I hope you received what you needed. And then tell your neighbor, I hope you live out what you got. Amen. Amen. We're going to, be a, we're going to adjourn until this evening at 6. So if you want to in, be in the house and have a good seat, I suggest you go get a cup of coffee and come back and just park up and wait. Amen. Amen. We want you to be dismissed as orderly as possible under the direction of the usher. Amen. At this time, God bless you, family, and we'll see you in a few hours. You are under the instructions of the usher. <laughs>